What's going on, world? It's your man Saint Uno back again for another one. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about Friday the 13th and what it actually is, what its origins are, what its significance is in your life, and why that is important for the upcoming new moon slash solar eclipse on Friday. Well, it's really on Friday the 14th but Friday the 13th as well, you know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of hocus pocus, you know what I'm saying? Spookism, buzzwordy kind of internet-y stuff going around. So we are gonna get down to the nitty gritty to find out what these things actually mean and what energies to actually play out so that you're not lost and spookified and afraid and you know what I'm saying? Believing in horror narratives that they give you, you know what I'm saying? which may not apply to you necessarily. So, first off, right, and we're going to be breaking down Friday the 13th from a historical aspect. So I got my, my, my notes pulled up. Shouts Wikipedia out this motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? So I got my notes pulled up, but then we're also going to be breaking it down from a numerology and gematria aspect. And then also from an astrological aspect with Friday in and of itself, you know what I'm saying? So... Let's get right into it. First of all, you got to understand, right? Whenever this is essentially a holiday, right? And what are holidays? Holidays are holy days, aka just days that they are stamping moments in time as significant based off of planetary transitions, whether that's solstices and equinoxes like Easter and Christmas and things of that nature, you know what I'm saying? So these are just telling you about certain significant events that happen in the sky. And since they play out, see, we live in a solar system, right? So the shadow government is the system that we live under. So they place their importance on the system that rules the universe and the planets so that they can be the rulers of the people on these planets, a.k.a. your monkey ass, you know what I'm saying? So they're going to play the face, right, because we're all under these planetary influences, but if they risk the chance of you just understanding these things for yourselves and looking at them naked as is, as they are in the sky, then they risk the chance of you tapping into these energies as well. And then they don't be, they don't get any power. They don't, they're not able to drain your energy um, the way that they do during, you know, what I'm saying holidays and shit like that. And I even made a couple of videos about that, about um, raptures and how raptures is basically just summoning up a whole bunch of souls. You know, what I'm saying it's energy. It's like harvesting soul energy to use for so that the souls that get raptured up, they're not working in their own favor. They're just working as basically batteries to power, you know what I'm saying, the powers that be. And then they can use your energy to manifest and foster whatever they got going on in the world, you know what I'm saying? And a, a one popular way that they create these raptures is during holiday events, also during like full moons and, you know what I'm saying, shit like that. But that's all the same thing. Um, uh, fucking lunar, not lunar, but uh, what am I trying to say? Celestial, that's the word, celestial events, right? So once you understand that, it's just talking about celestial events. Um, you understand, okay, let, then you can look at holidays, quote unquote, the right way. So you're not looking at Christmas as, oh, okay, this is a Christian holiday, or even if it was, they say it was a pagan holiday beforehand, and oh, it's about gifts, and oh, it's a day to, you know what I'm saying, be with family. That's all after the hand, after the fact, you know what I'm saying? When really it's just the winter equinox, you know what I'm saying? It's just, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know what I'm saying? Well, like when we go into the death season, you know what I'm saying? So it's no more time to be giving life to anything or something like that. So, and you're basically just creating a shelter, you know what I'm saying, in the winter time. Um, and you're doing that witchcraft of taking the summertime, the star on top of the Christmas tree, and bringing that inside because there's no more bright sunny shit outside you know what I'm saying or in the middle of winter the fixated portion of winter or about to go into it at least it's really the cardinal um but um so yeah now you can create uh sunshine and happiness and abundance and gives internally even though outside it's you know what I'm saying frozen and shit like that and then easter and it's like oh, okay the rebirth 
of Jesus, but it's not really Jesus. It's just talking about the sun. Jesus is an allegory for the sun. Remember that. That's important for this video um, about Friday the 13th. So <clears throat> why is Friday the 13th considered unlucky, unfortunate? And then also you got to ask, who is it unlucky and unfortunate for? That's always the thing, right? Because even when we talk about God and the devil or, you know what I'm saying, Satan, Satan just means opposer, Saturn, the opposite position of the sun. So if you're somebody and you are, you know what I'm saying, not in rulership and you don't have any power, you're, you've got some slave last name like I do, like Washington, you come from a, a Mason's nut stain, nut cloth or something like that, and you're always complaining about the powers that be and the Illuminati and the government and shit like that, well... You, that means you are, you are Satan. You are the opposer, right? Because what's bad for you is good for the quote unquote the powers that be. And an opposite, what's bad for the powers that be is good for you. So you got to be real careful when you start to just kind of blindly accept things as, oh, okay, this is a day of bad luck or a day of bad fortune. Bad for who? Because last time I checked, if it's bad for the people, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So if I'm getting online every day talking about how, oh, you know what I'm saying, the, the government does this and they always tricking and fooling people and taking advantage and all this shit, da 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 But at the same time, the, the days that they give me as, oh, this is a bad day, well, if I have any sorts of wits about, about me, I'm going to understand, okay, if it's a bad day, if, if you want me to believe it's a bad day and you're constantly doing things that are you know what I'm saying, meant to disempower me and not let me tap into my own power, then really everything's in reverse, right? That's what we always say. So if anything, this should be a good day, a good day, good Stargate portal and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? And then that's just based off of simple logic. But then we can get into the actual history of it too to kind of substantiate this claim because the claim that I'm ultimately making is that Friday the 13th is a great day. It is a good day. And you need to not celebrate it because it's still one of their holidays, but you don't need to get lost in the spookism, the spookism of, oh, something's going to go wrong or, oh, it might be a bit. Nah, nah, fuck all that. If anything, what's going wrong is that I'm going to tap into my own power and get the Pope up out of his seat and get the government out there and break bread, you know what I'm saying, and get more of a dominion and name and a seat at the table, you know what I'm saying, which they don't want. So, yeah, that's bad for them. But it's really good for me. And we can um, make these, uh, I can make this, 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 uh, what's the word? I can make this, it's not an assumption. I can make this dissertation. Fuck it, it's a dissertation. We get real scholastic. Um, based off of history and numerology. So, just from a histor histor historiography perspective, right? Where you can just look up, where does, um, where does Friday the 13th, where does Friday the 13th originate? It originates from the Knights Templar. And if you know anything about the Knights Templar, all this shit's available on the internet. You can fact check everything I'm saying up. The Knights Templar um, is a branch of Freemasonry, right? I don't want to say a branch, but it's like, it's kind of like that video I was talking about where it's like, oh, you call it the Illuminati and just because it's not necessarily called the quote unquote Illuminati, Illuminati, that don't mean that that energy does exist. So it, it's not really important to get into, oh, this is a branch of this or this is that. But for the most part, Knights, Tem Knights Templar are some motherfucking Masons, right? And there's some Freemasons. And they ain't just no Rudy Poot ass Masons like your uncle who got the, who got the fucking, um, you know what I'm saying, the little compass and, and ruler on the back seat of his Honda Civic and shit like that, talking about he a Freemason. No, no, he ain't no. These are like actual Freemasons, you know what I'm saying, um, who like basically set up the modern day banking system, right? So even if you think that banks and the whole monetary system is a scam, which it is, you know what I'm saying, the people that kind of that energy into B, and you don't own no banks, you know what I'm saying, you got to pay taxes and all this shit, so... Yeah, these motherfuckers are the motherfuckers that really started banks. And I'm going to um, bear with me in this video because, you know, usually I just be freestyling. But, you know what I'm saying, I'm making real, real claims, real knowledgeable claims. So I got to have sources and shit. We writing a paper. A nobleman who was interested, a nobleman. So it's like a land-owning man. This is all in the medieval times, right? A nobleman who was interested in, in participating 
in the Crusades, the Christian church and shit, might place all his assets under Templar management while he was away, the Knights Templars, Freemasons, accumulating wealth in this manner throughout Christendom and the outer reamer, the order in 1150 began generating, wait, no, hold on. Accumulating wealth in this manner throughout Christendom and the outer reamer, the order in 1150 began generating letters of credit. So you be complaining about credit and shit to this day. These motherfuckers basically invented credit. I, mean, I saw a good meme one time. It's like we lit literally earth grows off the ground, but we got credit scores and shit. Humanity's fucked up. Well, these are the motherfuckers that, you know what I'm saying, fucked it up. You know what I'm saying? We could all be living free and shit. Letters of credit for pilgrims journeying to the Holy Land. Pilgrims deposited their valuables with a local Templar preceptory before embarking. Because, okay, so the pilgrims, they was getting robbed and shit, right? By like savages, indigenous people, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers was just lawless land and shit. You know what I'm saying? So you got these Christian pilgrims who are making these treks across nations and shit like that, but they kept getting robbed for all their money and shit like that by the pirates and shit, you know what I'm saying? So in order to stop this from happening, what they would do is they would get letters of credit from the Knights Templar. So you would be, it was basically like the origin of the banking system. So they don't have to travel with all their riches. They would leave it with the Knights Templar right? The Knights Templar would give them some sort of signed, okay, let me just read it. Um, the value of the local Templar preceptory before embarking received a document indicating the value of the deposit, then used that document upon arrival in the Holy, Holy Land, Jerusalem, to retrieve their funds in an amount of treasure of equal value, right? So they don't have to travel with their treasure. They got a document from the Knights Templar saying, oh, we got this amount of money. So you ain't got to travel with it and you don't got to get robbed. And then when you get to the Holy Land, they got the, t okay, well, we can just give you the treasure. So it's basically like a bank. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to have the shit on you. They hold it for you. Of course, for a cut, though. You know what I'm saying? Um, to retrieve funds and amount of treasure of equal value. This innovative arrangement was an early form of banking and may have been the first formal system to, the, to support the use of checks and improve the safety of pilgrims by making them less attractive targets for thieves and also contributed to the Templars coffers you know what I'm saying so the Templars these are some of the first people who were a, a part of the Christian church which you always be complaining about Christianity and all its morals and all its values and how it's got the world under mind control so they were they were Christians first of all and they were Masons right and they were in on the monetary banking system right so we're basically talking about a form of the government even though they end up being killed by the government or ousted by the government which that's a story i'm even skeptical about that but let's just go with you know what i'm saying historical accuracy or whatever there's a reason behind that too as well but we're gonna get there bear with me all right so now you know the templars um you know what i'm saying they set up money they set up you know what i'm saying christianity they did they went on drills they were basically drilling for the pope they were drilling for um, the king and shit like that. So they were just like, you know what I'm saying? The long arm of the law. They were them boys. They were the boys in blue, essentially. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? You want to say fuck 12 and shit, but then you want to say, oh, Friday the 13th is, is a bad luck day. You, you got to say bad luck for who? You know what I'm saying? So, um, moving on. Into the anti-Muslim military. I think I want to read one more thing. These Templar... Well, anyway, getting into th that just basically established who the Templars were, right? So getting to Friday the 13th, the origin of the um, of Friday the 13th, right, is, okay, here's what I want. Uh, at dawn, this is the origin of Friday the 13th. At dawn, on Friday the 13th, October 13, again, 07, a date that helped influence the superstition, but not necessarily the origin. Uh, it's the origin, because like, you don't find nothing else that talks about the origin. So that's the motherfucking origin. King Philip V ordered um, scores of French Templars to be simultaneously arrested. The arrest warrant started with the words, um, we have, God is not pleased. We have enemies of the faith in the kingdom, right? So the Friday the 13th is basically the day where the Pope um sent out missionaries to arrest all the knights templars which were freemasons 
and then have them burn at the stake as being uh, her, uh, under charges of heresy, you know what I'm saying, being heretical. Uh, they said they spit on the cross and all that, which that's actually a, a Freemason ritual, um, spitting on the cross and shit like and all that. But um, basically the church um, ousted the Freemasons and had them all burned. So that's why free, the Friday the 13th is considered an unlucky day, right? Now, if you ask me, I don't even think this shit actually happened. They do this all the time where they just set up narratives um, to, but, but here's why it's important, right? Because if you saw the last, was it the last video? It was a recent video I did. Um, what was it about? It was the, um, oh, I know. It was the video basically talking about um, Meta, Twitter, and Pluto and Aquarius, right? And how they transformed the name Meta to, uh, to um, on Facebook to Meta and Twitter to X, right? To play out this Pluto in Aquarius situation dealing with social networking, Aquarius type things. They're putting death to these things by changing their name, but it's still the same motherfuckers in power behind the actual organization. So they're basically playing out the as above, so below. Something has to be put to death. Something has to be transformed, but we're going to be the ones that transform it and not actually get transformed, a.k.a. not actually let some other individual come and take power and take over the world and take over what we got going on. No, we're not going to allow that to happen, but we still have to acknowledge the as above, so below. So to make sure that we still maintain power, but still are on the right side of energy, quote unquote, we're going to put to death our names and transform our names to a new title. And this is what they always do, um, even down to religions and astrology and all that shit, where you see different names for throughout different civilizations, but it'd be talking about the same energy, right? How shit used to be Mayat in Egypt days, and now it's just Libra, you know what I'm saying? Same shit, the scales, and we're in Libra season right now. So you got to understand that the Knights Templars, which were Freemasons, they um, were killed and burned at the stake on Friday the 13th. So, but like I said, I don't think this actually happened. This is just the same way. And also it happened in the 1300s, 1307, right? So um, this is just the same way because even though it's the Pope that, that quote unquote, um, had the, who sent the hit and had them killed and shit like that, they're all in cahoots, right? It's still a Christian organization, right? So they're all in cahoots, but they're just playing the same way that Hitler had the Jews burned or whatever and shit like that. It's all the same shit, but they have to play out these renewal rituals of energy so that the real Jews and the real Masons and the real top dogs can maintain power. Um, but because if they, they understand that if they keep the same name and they keep the same identity throughout um, history, then uh, that's going to expire. You know what I'm saying? That's not going to, they, they, they have to renew these things. They have to update these things. So one way that they are able to stay in power is by changing the face of how that power looks throughout time. And one of these days that they did that, um, whether it happened or didn't happen was on Friday, the 13th, October 1307. So now that you understand that, you know, okay, if Freemasons or Illuminati or the shadow government or the powers that be, whatever I want to fucking call it, um, are the thing that I'm constantly complaining about, then I need to understand that if the origin of Friday the 13th was something negative happening to them, that is a good thing for me. So this is a day not to be in fear of shit going wrong. Um, this is a day to actually make shit go wrong for the people who have their foot on your neck and that are keeping the powers that be that are keeping you in your small insignificant, which ain't nobody keeping you nowhere. You have the ultimate power, but it's through realizations such as this by not participating in their rituals that they have set up dedicated to their lineages and what they place significance and importance to, right? Because they always want to play out the face of God, the face of this fourth dimensional en energy, which brings us into the actual numerology of Friday the 13th, right? So, and the gematria. So we got 
13. What is 13? From a gematria aspect, right? That's addition. That's um, adding two, these things together. You got, or is that numerology? It don't really matter. It's, one of them is 13 and one of them is 4. But whichever one is numerology or gematria, it don't really matter. That's just words. But Friday the 13th is 1 and 3, right? So what is 1? One? 1 is being an individual. It's like Aries. It's like the birth. It's like I am the individual, right? I am the sun, essentially. And then you got 1 and you got 3. What does 3 symbolize? 3 symbolizes um, a surrounding. You know what I'm saying? This is like your, the general area. We are in the third dimension, right? So when you got 1 and 3, this is being the primary individual the, the, self, the selfish individual, the main individual, the shit, I'm number one, I am the one ruler, I am the one king, I am the one, you know what I'm saying, I'm the one, even that phrase, I am the one, I'm saying uno, you know what I'm saying, like, it's, I'm the one, you know what I'm saying, I am the one in this third dimensional realm, in this 3D surrounding, so we're all gonna, the whole surrounding is basically um, worships me, or is in support of me or is under my reign, right? So that's 13. And then when you add the one and the three together, you get four, right? And this is fourth dimensional. This is like an oversoul. This is like a thought. And we know that there's only two minds down here. Shouts to Dolo the Pilot Man, Subconscious Community and Soul Group. But so a, a four, we understand that the entire world is ran by a thought. You know what I'm saying? A Mason's mind. And this is how they're able to run everybody from a speculative aspect where they don't have to actually do like they used to do during the medieval times and come and hang you upside down and rule by force. They got more advanced over time by practicing these witchcrafts and realize, oh, okay, if we can just control everybody's mind, government, govern mentalities, if we can just control everyone's mind, then we don't have to put a boot off in their ass. We don't have to burn people at the cross. We don't have to do all that shit. All we have to do is control their minds and the way they perceive reality and what they think is good and bad and right is wrong and all that shit. And they'll just build our world for us without us even having to try. And then they'll even think that it's the only and the best option and they won't even feel like the slaves that they actually are. You know what I'm saying? Because we can, we've done mind control. We've done witchcraft, right? And this happens through a fourth dimension oversoul where you have a spirit, a thought, a, a, a man that is too big, that's, that's, re, that's reincarnated so much in this three dimensional, this surrounding, right? To the point that they've accumulated so much knowledge and so many lifetimes that they can't reincarnate and take on a human form again, but they're still quote unquote trap they had they, they haven't been able to let go and transcend and go to another dimension and shit like that so they're still here but they exist as a fourth dimensional oversoul which is basically a whole bunch of so they may run the mind of a whole bunch of people it's like agent smith in the matrix right whereas if you're not neo or trinity or morpheus or if you're not unplugged from the matrix yeah you may be whatever character but at any moment you can be turned into what uh, agent smith your mind can be taken over because ultimately you don't have your own mind you're not unplugged from the matrix you still sir you still think the matrix is real and they set up and design the matrix so they can always use you as you know what i'm saying to turn into an agent smith to go against people who aren't in support of the rulership or aren't in support of the way that the things are currently run, right? So this is what this is why you think everybody is a zombie or everybody is an agent. This is what this means. They're all they're, they're all run by one mind. So they they're the one mind that runs the third dimension, 13, and they exist as a fourth dimensional oversoul or a thought that runs everybody's mind, right? So that's the significance of 13, you know what I'm saying? So that's why they practice that witchcraft of you thinking, oh, shit is scary. And even down to the way that you perceive Friday the 13th, it's like you thinking some some scary shit going on. But you were taught that by the powers that be like you didn't you weren't a, you weren't a Freemason. You know what I'm saying? You weren't in the Knights Templar. So who's to say that some bad shit's going to happen to you that day? You was probably the motherfuckers that was robbing the pilgrims and shit like that. That was had all the money and shit like that and taking over the land. 
and um, that that was being protected by the Knights Templar. So yeah, now that the Knights Templar is, is gone, you shit, you can start robbing these pilgrims, these Christians and shit again. And that's basically what we're doing now. But now we're not doing it physically. We're doing it with the mind. We're doing it intellectually by, you know what I'm saying, saying y'all don't have the only mind that, down here. Y'all can't just run shit. Everybody's not an agent as much as y'all try to make everybody look like an agent on the news and the media and with these celebrities and shit like that. No, nah, there's people who actually know what the fuck is going on. And we finna have our, you know what I'm saying, our seat at the table, our piece of the pie and shit like that, even though y'all don't want it to be like that because we understand these certain things. So that is the significance of the 13. And even getting down into the religious aspect of it, where it's the sun going through the 12 houses, you know what I'm saying? If you got a grandma like mine and she practiced grandma Christianity, you know what I'm saying? She probably had um, a picture of the Last Supper in her house. I know my grandma did. She had the black black Jesus with all the black disciples and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Grandma Christianity at its finest. You know what I'm saying? So, but she didn't. Well, I ain't gonna say what she did or didn't. Well, she probably didn't understand. But shout out to grandma out though. But um, you know what I'm saying? She didn't necessarily understand that these this was just an allegory to Jesus, the Son, traveling through the twelve houses. Aries through Pisces um, to make that 13. She just took it as, oh, okay, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and I love Jesus, and da 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 and shit like that. And, um, you know what I'm saying, that's why we got slave last names, and, you know what I'm saying, we wasn't poor, no shit like that, but we wasn't in a position of a power as much as we could be, you know what I'm saying, how we understood these energies for ourselves. So we got to break these generational curses and not just go along with certain holidays and certain meanings that they give us and learn the actual shit that we all have access to. You know what I'm saying? So that is, that's what they do. That's what Jesus and religion, all this shit is. They rule the third dimension. They are the one true God. I am the light. I am the way. You can only come through me. All that kind of shit. You, that's real singular, selfish. I am the one. Yahweh, Yahweh, Aries energy, right? In the third dimension, you know what I'm saying? The one, two, and th the surroundings, everything around here, you know what I'm saying? And the way they do that is by putting those together, and now you got fourth dimension uh, oversoul, you know what I'm saying? So that is the significance of the number 13, the origin of Friday the 13th, and the numerology and gematria behind Friday the 13th. Now, getting into Friday the 13th during this new moon in Libra. Right, so this is significant. There's an ass thing coming in. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Yes, okay. Check, check. One, two, you still going? Yeah, okay. This is significant during this time period, right? Because what did I say in the beginning of this video? Um, Saturn is just uh, or Satan is just Saturn or the opposer to the sun, right? The sun. Aries. And we know that the sun is exalted in Aries, in the first house, and it falls in Libra, in the fall season. So we're going into fall. We're, we're in the cardinal fall, cardinal air um, season as is, Libra season, experiencing this new moon in Libra on Friday the 13th, which is Venus Day the 13th. And Venus Day is, um, you know what I'm saying, Venus uh, is at home in Libra and shit like that. So now we understand that, okay, and, it, and it's a, um, a solar eclipse, right? So it's kind of it's interesting because the sun falls in Libra, right? So that means it's, it don't like to be there. So that means that your actions um, aren't going to necessarily your individuality is going to be kind of smothered during Libra season. It's not like airy season when you're just giving birth and it's like, oh, I'm going to be an individual. I'm going to do my own creative gifts and I don't give a fuck who's watching. And yeah, I'm going to plant these seeds and let's go right into it. Now we're in Libra season where it's like, okay, uh, you may have been doing that throughout all the spring and summer and um, you're kind of harvesting and reaping the benefits of that. But at the same time that everything has to go to sleep, everything has to rest. So, it's not necessarily the time for that, for you to be all gung-ho and, you know what I'm saying, planting new seeds and being the shit and being out there. Um, it's more about Libra, balance with other individuals, right? So while the, fall, while the um, sun is also in its fallen state, we also on top of that have a solar eclipse, right? So 
what is the significance, astrologically speaking, of a solar eclipse? It's very simple. It's just as above, so below. So if the sun, what is your sun sign? It's your actions, the way that you act. You know what I'm saying? So if the sun as above is going to be blocked out, um, that means your actions are going to be blocked out. And they're blocked out by what? By the moon, by your feelings, by your intuition. So this means that this is going to be a time to lean. This is going to be one of those new moons where it's not so much as about doing new things, right? Because we have this, the sun in Libra, which is the sun falls in Libra, and we have a solar eclipse. So the sun's going to be blocked out. So your actions are going to be essentially not only debilitated, but also blocked out. You're not even going to, there's going to be no real good way to act essentially. So you're going to have to lean completely on your intuition and your internal natures, you know what I'm saying? And the, the, and the moon and your moon essentially, but the moon is in Libra as well. It's a new moon in Libra. So you're going to be reacting and responding to things of balance. Um, other individuals, relationships, you know what I'm saying, compassion, um, and not necessarily taking action on these things because, like I said, the, um, we have a solar eclipse, but you're just going to lean more on that intuitive nature and allow that to guide you, right? Whereas during most new moons, you may be saying, okay, it's time for me to take action based on where the sun and the moon is. Um, this one's going to look a little bit different for everybody in general because it's going to just force you to go inward and realize and lean on that intuition and understand how you're relating to other individuals, right? And not always just be wanting to show your ass, aka be the sun, be the center of attention, be that Leo or whatever that is. No, you're going to just kind of need to receive more and understand um, how you're being received by other individuals so that you can be more balanced and create more harmonious relationships with other individuals because it is these harmonious relationships with other individuals that is going to carry us through the fall and the winter season the same way you being an individual and doing what you want to do and expressing yourself is what kind of takes you all the way through the spring and the summer season right so to wrap all of those things up it's a Friday the 13th this doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad day. I see this as a very opportune time because the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And if I'm sitting here complaining about the shadow government every day on the internet and they're telling me this is a bad day, stay at home, uh, be afraid of everything, I'm gonna go out and not be afraid of everything and think this is actually a stargate for beautiful, magnificent things to happen in my life, right? Based on the history of this being a bad day for who? Knights Templar which was actually Freemasons. And then it's a Venus day, right? So, and we're in Libra season and it's a new moon in Libra. So like, but the solar eclipse is basically saying you don't need to be so action based, right? So yeah, even though it may be a good day based on Friday the 13th energy, it's not going to be a good day for you to go out and necessarily act on things but to be more reactionary, right? But at the same time, you don't want to be reactionary in a sense of f fear or like thinking something's going to go wrong. No, it's really the ultimate harvest. It's time to be just receive um, because that's even when we talk about receiving in abundance and kind of getting things, you can only really receive when you're not acting, when you're not thinking. That's why stuff, all, it, like they had that saying, um, you always find it when you're not looking for it the stars as above so below is telling you not to even look at it look for anything in this time period right there's no sun there's no light it's blocked out so you don't need to look for anything you just need to receive right but and and tap into your intuition but when you're doing that you're not doing that out of a fear of oh i don't want to go out or because the world is scary on friday the 13th no it's with the positive of okay yeah i may not be going out to do something but I understand that this is just a time for me to receive and get the ultimate, reap the ultimate benefits and harvest of all the seeds that I've been planting all year. And I can't receive when I'm out. I can't receive feminine when I'm out being masculine, doing things, putting out. So it's, it's really just a time to, if you've been planting seeds all year, which hopefully if you watch my channel, you have been. It, expect good fortune, you know what I'm saying? Expect good shit to come into your way. You know what I'm saying? Expect this this solar eclipse portal um, to basically bring you all the shit 
that can help you foster better relationships, um, more beautiful circumstances, you know what I'm saying, Libra's all about beauty and shit like that, and it's on a Venus day, you know what I'm saying, so it's going to be all about receiving pleasure and receiving abundance and receiving good relationships if you know, if you have the right mindset of, okay, yeah, it's a good day for me because it's a bad day for the people who are against me and I'm not out acting too much because I'm not going to be able to receive if I'm out acting too much. So that's basically to tie everything up. Um, Friday the 13th, solar eclipse and new moon in Libra. So now you know that, to, to like Ice Cube said, today is, well, it's not there yet, but if you're watching this on actual Friday the 13th, don't be in no spookism energy. Don't be in no scary. This, this is going to be a great day. You know what I'm saying? Just have that in your mind and receive all that the universe is trying to give you. You know what I'm saying? Even though we don't, you know what I'm saying? That little universe word gets a little funked out and new agey too. But y'all know what I'm saying. These words fail us. But for the most part, um, it's some good shit. There's no need to be afraid of anything. And this is a time to basically just reap all the benefits that the world and that you're trying to give yourself, essentially. All, you know what I'm saying? You as a spirit is trying to make these physical situations for your body um, to play out here in the third dimension, right? So that you can be the one that rules the third dimension. You can be the Jesus, you know what I'm saying? You can be, um, you know what I'm saying, the fourth dimensional oversoul that runs this world and you ain't got to be up under their rulership, you know what I'm saying? That's the kind of people that are into my content, into my channel. So, you know what I'm saying? You will never be less, but peace and blessings to everybody. I appreciate y'all for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.